Hello, welcome to the channel. A lot of you ask, um, which streamer would I recommend to use it with Dynatrips DAC? And the answer that I've given to the customer has always been, if you use Rune, I would highly recommend the Sound Aware streamer. Sound Aware D300, D300 reference, or the already discontinued D280, are Rune endpoint. It works well with Dynatrips DAC. But if you do not use Rune, I will not recommend the Sound Aware Streamer. Reason being is, Sound Aware Streamer is essentially a basic streamer that doesn't come with Spotify, Tidal, Cobas, Amazon HD Music, or Apple Music um, streaming services. It supports basic far playback over the SD card, over the USB drive. But if you are expecting this guy to work as a good streamer in a sense to have all these streamer services that I've talked about just now, no, it doesn't. But it works as a Rune endpoint. If you have, if you already have a Rune core in the network in your system, the Sound Aware is an easy recommendation. But if you do not have Rune core, I will not recommend the Sound Aware. Right. So let's talk about the D three hundred today. Um, it it is a D three hundred model. And one of the frequently asked questions is, what is the different difference between the Sound Aware D300 or the D300 reference? The D300 is a trickle down of the D300 reference. It doesn't have the super capacitor found in the D300 reference. So D300 reference has this a bunch of um, capacitor bank working like a internal battery to power up the streamer. But D300 doesn't have it. Other than that, I would say the D300 are more or less identical to the D300 reference. The price difference between the two is big. This guy is selling for about 2,600 um, Singapore dollars. The D300 reference, the higher end model, is retail for about 4,500 uh, Singapore dollars. So it's about $2,000 price different um, we are talking about here. Uh, if your system is of high end, high quality, you might want to go for the reference series. But if your system is modest, like mine, on the desktop setup, you might want to consider the D300 model instead. So it's it's going for about two thousand and six hundred Singapore dollars. Or in American, uh, in my America, you guys say twenty six hundred, <laughs> right? Okay, let me zoom in to this guy. So I I have the guy. I have this streamer power up. Um, it's come with a it comes with a power button, a pretty large screen for you to do some basic setting or basic um file navigation if you decided to use this guy to play the music from the SD card or the USB drive, or you decided to use this guy to to stream from the NAS, a uh, network attached drive. But um, uh, I will need to power power off this guy to show you what's at the back. Turn it off, unplug the power cord, unplug the HDMI cable that I have the i s HDMI connected to the Pontus DAC and unplug the network cable as well and don't drop this cable so that I don't have to bend my back to pick it up on the floor. Oh, oh, oh. it is dropping. <laughs> right. Okay, flip it to the back. We have IEC power inlet here. We have, um, hang on a second. Right, USB port for, for you to connect to USB drive or USB thumb drive that um, it stores the music and the Sound Aware streamer is able to browse the music stored in the USB drive. It has a network port that you can connect to your uh, home network that Sound Aware can also be used as an A play um, in the same network, can be used to browse the music file stored in the NAS. Uh, there are some guide that you need to go through. Uh, it is available in the manual to for the sound aware streamer to detect the drive to to detect the NAS in the network so that it can browse the music in the network drive. It comes with a Bluetooth uh, um, antenna. It can also be used as a Bluetooth um, music streamer where you can stream the music via Bluetooth to the sound aware streamer. It comes with a USB port. Yes, you can use this guy as a USB DDC, uh, a digital to digital converter. So you can connect the USB to the computer or to your mobile phone or to a streamer that's come with USB output. And this guy can act as a DDC. So there are a couple of digital output here. Um, 
optical. Oh, I'm wrong. I am, I'm right, yes. So these are the digital output. So I'm confused with the digital input that it might have. No, it doesn't have digital input. It only comes with a USB, uh, USB connection. The other model comes with a digital input. So I'm confused with the two models because I only use this guy as a streamer for Rune endpoint. <laughs> okay, draw aside. So it comes with uh, various digital output, optical connection, coaxial connection, AES EBU, and I2S. I will highly recommend you to consider using the I2S output if you use Dynafrips, Pontus, Venus, Terminator 2, or the Terminator Plus DAC. The I2S output is compatible with the Dynafrips I2S input, and in my opinion, it is the best output of the Sound OS streamer. And you notice that there, there is this clock in out connection here. So the two BNC clock connector here can be clock synchronized with Terminator 2 or the Terminator Plus. I'll discuss this in another video, so this video doesn't get too long. And this clock um, can be enabled or disabled via this little push button here. So if you decided to use the external clock input to this sound OS streamer, you can enable this um, clock input so that the sound OS streamer will be using the external clock instead of the internal clock. So this is the rear panel, and let me flip it to the front and show you some of the basic configuration of this guy. So power, this guy, power up this guy, and uh, we should see after a couple of seconds, the, the streamer will start up. And meanwhile, I'll connect the HDMI cable to the back. So the HDMI cable output the I2S to the Pontus DAC on my desktop setup. And this Ethernet cable connect to the Ethernet port and wait for the guy to boot up. It comes with a pretty bulky menu, uh, pretty bulky remote control. Not so nice looking, it's in plastic, but it works. Okay, so if you want to use this guy as a rune endpoint, um, the, following, the following steps um, might be of interest to you. So I already have the Ethernet cable plugged in. The first step that we need to do is to configure the IP address of this streamer. So how do we do this? Um, it is already set up, so the, the, main, the display will display the manual and hit on the left button, right button on the remote control. I'm not sure whether the camera can capture this. I hope it can, otherwise you need to zoom in this video. Navigate to general setting, network setting, and select DHCP. So DHCP allow the streamer to uh, request IP address from the wireless router or the router that in your household, in, in your home network, to assign an IP address to this guy. So select DHCP and it will generate the IP address and hit on the OK uh, button to store this IP address onto the streamer. <clears throat> then the next thing that you need to do is if you purchase a new one from us, it already comes with the latest firmware that allows the SoundWare D300 to work as a Rune endpoint. Um, if you have the older unit, you need to update the firmware so that the unit can work as a Rune endpoint. So the firmware can be found on the website. Um, you can download and install it um, via the SD card. So there's, there's instruction on the website for you to, uh, to guide you how to update the firmware. But my unit already come with the latest firmware. So um, there's, there's one little trick that you need to do to assign this guy as a as the correct model, otherwise it will not work as a rune endpoint. So what how to do this? Go to the upgrade button, upgrade menu, sorry, hit on the center button to confirm, and you'll go to this um firmware it tell us what the what is the firmware version and on this screen there's a button here for you to press up down left right and enter button. So the trick is hit on the down button and hold it for a couple of seconds you'll see there's another screen here to select the mod, select the right model of this streamer because the firmware is the same for D2, D280, D300, and D300 reference, but the hardware is different. So we need to tell the hardware that this model is D300. So if you have the D280 model, please select D280. But my unit is a D300, I need to Select D300, D300 and hit on the center button of this physical button on the unit itself. So once it is set, I can back to the previous screen. Hang on a second, let me mute my laptop. 
it is making some noise right now. Someone is trying to contact me while I'm filming this. <laughs> I'm sorry. Right, so we have set up this guy to the right model and to enable this guy as a rune endpoint, use the remote control or use the physical button here to navigate to, hang on a second, sound, select source. Select source um, here on the center button, it will lead you to another screen. So you can use this guy as a USB audio where you can connect the USB cable to this um, streamer to work as a USB DDC or you can use this guy as a hi-fi Bluetooth streamer where once it is enabled as a hi-fi Bluetooth streamer um, you can connect your home uh, your handphone or Bluetooth devices to this to stream music through the streamer but in this video I'll talk about the rune endpoint hit on the rune ready selection and this screen will show up it say rune ready and there's this little little icon here tell us that there's no music playing so at this point in time I'm oh, sorry I just dropped my remote control <laughs> never mind I'll just talk about the rune endpoint and I'll end this video and uh, it is already configured as a rune endpoint um, the next thing you need to do is to go to the go to the rune call rune call should detect this streamer in the setting and audio devices um, hopefully the camera can capture this screen here I hope otherwise you wouldn't be able to see this um, enable this uh, sound aware streamer and give it a meaningful name uh, I already named it as D300 so I'll need to select this as the output for rune rune ready device and I'll be able to stream music from my rune call to this streamer D300 as a rune endpoint and I2S output to the Pontus DAC and subsequently to my preamp and to my pair of Genelec loudspeaker um, it's, it's already a bigger one it's a 8020 right I'm thinking to buy the 8030 a little bit, a little bit bigger and uh, I suppose it has better bass response but this pair of loudspeaker is already pretty good compared to the smaller one uh, I'm putting on top of my shelf <laughs> Right, uh, let me play some tone um, using this um, rune call so that you guys can hear uh, something. Right. Of course, I2S need to be configured, otherwise you will, you will not be able to use it correctly. So for I2S configuration, please refer to the link below. And of course, I already have the I2S configured so you can hear the music playing correctly. So this is how you use the sound aware streamer as a rune endpoint. And music playing pretty nicely. And you notice that on the screen itself, it doesn't display the album arc. It only display it is playing something, and the sampling rate is 48 kilohertz, 24 bit, and that's that's about it. That there's no fancy um, album artwork display on the screen. And in my opinion, I, I I do not really look at this screen because I use my mobile phone as a rune app to navigate the album to play with my music so I don't really bother about I'm, I'm not bothered about the display on the screen alright and uh, uh, the good thing is the screen can be turned off so there's a setting to turn off the screen so if you don't need the screen to light up all the time you can have it turned off after 30 seconds or 10 seconds or so alright I hope this video helps and um, thank you for watching this I'll see you next time bye bye